when you think of kvk1 commanders which commanders do you think of i personally think of julius caesar because he was one of the most iconic commanders that i immediately recognized when i first downloaded rise of kingdoms all the way back in 2018 and i quickly realized that he's actually not very good but some of you may think of freddy or maybe even Cao Cao and minamoto but what if i told you that there was not only one commander but two commanders from kvk1 that lilith has completely forgotten about today we'll be discussing the who what when where why and how of these commanders but first what's going on guys cheers this is an ice cold diet mountain dew because it is over 90 degrees in new york city and it's been this hot for many days and it will continue to be this hot for many days and guess whose air conditioner broke two days ago baby let's go anyway when i think of season one commanders i think about the commanders that you can get from your tavern in the golden chests okay i think about these guys i think julius caesar freddy Cao Cao, charles martel the usual suspects okay and furthermore there are some commanders here that have been added over time so for those of you who don't know when rise of kingdoms first came out we didn't have sunduk in the golden keys we didn't have ishida we didn't have mehmed we didn't have any of these guys and they were added as new civilizations came into the game or as far as i remember i think sunduk and ishida came with different events to just add more gathering commanders to the game and so you might be thinking omniarch what do you mean by forgotten right like all the commanders that started here are still here and what i mean by forgotten is there haven't been any real updates to these two commanders at all now if you take a look in the museum you'll notice that all of the season one commanders have their own relic in the museum including commanders like barca and like minamoto which aren't from the tavern but are definitely season one commanders and you even have commanders like charlemagne that you would get from winning kvk1 and they also even implemented season two commanders and a couple of season three commanders now with attila and takeda but even wu zetian which you get from season two of kvk right and so when you look at this it's like okay it seems like the gang is all here right it seems like the gang is all here and in fact some of them even have double upgrades but what if i told you that there actually is a commander that is missing from the museum relic system and that is none other than the powerful demon god lubu from dynasty warriors 9 and by extension this also implies that lilith has completely forgotten about dao chan as well and the reason that i wanted to make this video is because over the past couple of years and especially in the past few months i've seen people comment either on the discord or in my youtube YouTube comments or other people mentioning this in messages people have asked me how do I get Dao Chan or when is she coming back or when is the event going to return and so today I wanted to talk about these two commanders that for me are sort of commonplace they kind of just sit there and they've always been on my account but for a lot of you that just started playing rise of kingdoms within the past one or two years and even longer than that honestly uh you might not know that much about these commanders and so let's do a quick history lesson shall we i know that's so much fun then you might be saying well omniarch what makes you think that these are actually kvk1 commanders and the answer is that everything otherwise has it stated at the very top of the screen right if they are kvk3 or later commanders you will see that at the top of the screen and if they are kvk2 and later commanders you'll see that at the top of the screen but lubu and dao chan do not have that warning at the top which implies that they can be used in kvk1 and they actually can and if you take a look at their kits you'll know that they were basically built for kvk1 because the kit on lubu and dao chan is really not that impressive although i actually like dao chan quite a bit just not for pvp and we'll talk about that in just a second but the active skill on lubu is an 800 damage factor three target aoe it does reduce by 15 percent for each additional target but it does have a 40 percent defense reduction and when you expertise lubu you actually get bump this up to a thousand and have a 50 percent defense reduction now this is quite literally the only interesting thing about lubu in the game because this is as far as i know the highest defense reduction in the game and it is applied in aoe fashion so essentially this is kind of like the health debuff on Scipio prime uh not Scipio emilianus by the way Scipio prime no not epic Scipio Scipio prime yes I, I know it's confusing there's three Scipios and I'm never gonna let that go Lilith why do you keep doing this anyway this is basically uh Scipio prime but defense version and more right Scipio prime gives you a 30 percent health reduction on the active skill to three targets this is a 50 percent defense reduction for three seconds to three targets so it's actually quite interesting now the downside of course is the damage factor is literally like the same damage factor as 
I don't know um buy bars which actually buy bars is even better because he hits up to five targets for a thousand damage factor which is just and there and it's not reduced for each additional target and you'll notice that which is very unique most commanders it is reduced buy bars it isn't so here we have an epic commander that is literally better than lubu from a damage output perspective and even if we look at somebody like sun tzu again five targets 800 damage factor and then another damage factor after that so a thousand plus rage regeneration on top of that so we just gave you two epic commanders with more damage factor on their active skill than lubu who is a legendary so again the actual defense reduction here is the only interesting thing on his entire kit not to mention he is a leadership conquering and skill based commander skill tree is nice but we already have some leadership conquering commanders especially in kvk1 so this is really not that great second skill 10 percent more damage when attacking a city that's boring third skill you get 15 percent attack generic attack woohoo let's go now you also have a 10 percent chance to gain 80 percent attack for three seconds or when paired with Dao Chan it would be 120 percent attack for three seconds which that's kind of like uh the second skill on YSG except YSG actually gives you extra rage as well so yeah this is not a very good skill the third skill gives you 10 percent troop capacity and 10 percent rally army unit capacity as well so very similar to Mehmed's fourth skill and we've already gone over the expertise so Lubu not only has been completely forgotten by Lilith but his skills have aged horribly they were bad when he came out and they've only gotten worse over time and so if there's any commander in the game that needs a relic it would be Lubu right Lubu should be the number one prime target for a relic in Rise of Kingdoms and yet he's the only one that actually doesn't have a relic now it's also worth noting that you see like this pink and like yellow swirly animation that's happening right now that used to be behind lubu um so i don't know why this like portal looking swirl thing has now been moved in front of lubu i think this is probably just a graphical error if somebody at lilith knows why that might be happening please let me know but yeah i don't know what's going on there also you can see there's like palm trees inside of that little portal there so like what portal is he coming from where is he coming from i have no idea is that supposed to be like the backdrop of the of the like the china background because i don't think we see that for any other chinese commander right no we don't there's no palm trees in the back there so i have no idea why you can see like palm trees and maybe it doesn't translate to video hopefully you guys can see what i'm talking about like but those like little thin palm trees there um i'm assuming that this is some sort of portal as like a reason for why lubu from dynasty North warriors 9 would be in rise of kingdoms like he came through a portal or something like that that's what i'm assuming here but lilith i would i would you should probably put this portal behind him again because it just kind of makes it look like you can't even see him anyway the point of this video was not to talk about his portal the point of the video was to talk about why doesn't he have a relic and why has Lilith forgotten him but I think perhaps even more importantly why haven't we gotten Dao Chen right because Dao Chen unlike Lu Bu is actually useful because she's a peacekeeping integration and support commander which means she actually can be used for defeating barbarians out in the world and i personally use dao chan when i'm defeating barbs i think she's great for that right you have first of all her active skill when she's expertise it's 400 damage factor per second for four seconds which means it's 1600 damage factor to a single target now it's damage over time which means it's horrible for pvp but in PvE, you're going to be connected to that target anyway. This is like the highest single target damage factor of any epic commander, uh, I think, in the game. As long as you get max value here, which is nice. Her second skill is literally just a better version of Boudica, right? Boudica gives you 25% bonus damage and 20% experience. She gives you 25-25, which is great. Her third skill gives you generic attack and defense, whereas you actually don't see that on Boudica at all, right? This is just universal stats, which is great. And then the fourth skill actually gives Gives you some healing which you ideally would want to have when you're doing barbarians because you want to stay out of your city as long as possible that way you can continue to benefit from the reduced rage cost of just basically chaining right so the healing factor is nice it's actually 500 but a thousand if paired with lubu most people aren't pairing her with lubu so in general i would say dao chen is actually a really good peacekeeping commander the fact that she's an epic is great makes her very cheap she's basically just a better version of Boudica. now Boudica does some other things right like with her active skill there's a debuff here and stuff but at the end of the day she's a perfectly good peacekeeping commander and most players these days cannot get their hands on her and that's super weird right like this commander i recruited at the end of 2020 so we are coming up on four years since lubu and dao chan have been in the game 
and yet there's no they there has literally never been another way to get your hands on these commanders and as i said at the beginning of this video there's been people that have been posting comments and truthfully it's not that common right most people don't care about these commanders but every once in a while i get comments or i see comments on like discord or something basically saying like hey whatever happened to these commanders how do you get your hands on them whatever because they're new players and they have no idea and the answer is that you can't they were a limited time dynasty warrior 9 crossover event uh you actually i think it was 20 dollars to unlock lubu if i'm not mistaken and as a completionist I just got it right back then I just wanted to get it also you got the five dollar pop-up bundle where you can get your universal sculptures right which was cool but at the end of the day Lubu is actual trash however Dao Chan is not but I really don't think that there's ever going to be another way to get these commanders right like this was a limited time event as a partnership with Dynasty Warriors 9 and therefore the licensing agreement that Lilith Games probably had with Dynasty Warriors 9 expired at the end of that event they probably had like I don't know 30 60 90 days worth of licensing for the Lubu and Dao Chan characters and part of that agreement probably said like hey we'll leave them in the game with the Dynasty Warriors 9 logo so that way it'll always kind of be a little reminder there for the players to give that game a try I guess I don't know but because Lubu and Dao Chan are not like inspired by Dynasty Warriors 9 they are literally the characters from those games just transported into rise of kingdoms Lilith doesn't probably have the rights to do much of anything with these commanders in the game beyond what their initial agreement was I honestly don't think that it would be in Lilith's best interest to reach out to Dynasty Warriors and be like hey like we want to do updates to this commander like what are you gonna charge for that right because you know Dynasty Warrior 9 like they're probably not gonna do anything for free that's just how business to business transactions go right everything comes with a cost and so most likely these two commanders are frozen in time forever there will probably never be another way to get your hands on them now the only exception to that would be if Dynasty Warriors 9 reached out to Lilith and said hey we have a new update coming out or something or maybe Dynasty Warriors 10 or whatever I don't even know how many of these games there are I literally don't know anything about that franchise to be honest with you but like maybe in the future if they ever partner together again perhaps we would see some sort of update to these commanders with a new way of unlocking them right like that would be kind of cool where they do eventually like maybe bring back that event plus now they have a relic for Lubu or something like that right like that would be kind of cool but beyond that and I think that's extremely unlikely by the way beyond that I don't see any reason that we would ever get these commanders back in the game and I don't think we'll ever see any updates or buffs or relics or anything like that to these commanders and so they're gonna just kind of stay in this locked state of forever unattainable by new players and forever useless to old players right at least in the case of Lu Bu where I guess Dao Chan you could argue she does have some sort of use but I find it kind of funny right because in the past I've made videos talking about the literal worst commanders in the game and Lu Bu always finds his way on that list and now that we have um relics for all the older commanders in the game some of them some of those commanders are a little bit more relevant than they were in the past and that worst commander tier list so to speak has kind of changed it a little bit over time and because of that Lu Bu, in my mind, will forever be frozen in time as the actual worst commander in the entire game. Like he is, act and, and by that I mean legendary commander. He is technically the worst legendary commander in the game, and he will stay like that forever if he never gets a buff or a relic I just don't see that ever changing his stats are horrible they're lower than even epic commanders his active skill damage is lower than even epic commanders there's nothing about this kit that makes him worthwhile he doesn't specialize in a troop type like there's just nothing here the only cool thing like I said is an AoE 50 percent defense reduction which is cool but at the end of the day like you just are making so many sacrifices to get that debuff on the field that it is literally not worth it it will never be worth it unless he gets a bang and relic he's just going to be trash forever and again they'd have to give him like 30 percent health 30 percent defense before people would maybe even possibly consider using him as like a backup secondary something or other right like maybe people would find use for him in canyon then because he would be kind of tanky with a good ego i don't know right but like it seems to be the case that lubu has been completely forgotten by lilith they have given up on anything related to him and primarily because they legally probably can't and that means all the new players in the game are never going to get their hands on them which like i said is more so a shame for dao chan but i just wanted to make this video as a sort of trip down memory lane reflect on what lubu and dao chan are why they came into 
into the game how they came into the game what they actually do and you know to answer the question for all the new players in the game how do you get them you don't you won't you probably will never get them and really you're not missing out on much at least for Lu Bu but it is a shame that players can't get their hands on Dao Chan because she is a really good peacekeeping commander in the epic tier in my opinion without Dao Chan in the game you actually can't run a full five army lineup of epic peacekeeping commanders right now of course if you factor in ethel fled then yeah you've got ethel fled as one march belisarius as another Boudica, lohar and then kiara but even still it's kind of a shame because dao chan is just a better Boudica. she deals more single target damage she gives you more experience for your commanders and she has a higher healing factor than Boudica as well three things that you would really want from a peacekeeping commander she does well but she is forever locked for most players now in the same vein as Dao Chan and Lu Bu there is some other lost or forgotten content that was put into the game by Lilith over the years one of the primary examples of that would be the Ninja Gaiden crossover event that gave us the Dragon Ninja bundle and the Shinobi of the Shadows bundle and these two bundles in the game I think they were like five dollars each or something like that and they came with these custom avatars that you can basically only get your hands on if you had bought those bundles and these bundles coincided with the release of a new ninja gaiden game i don't know which game it was i don't remember but of course i did get my hands on them because i'm insane and yeah if you weren't playing the game back then then you just have no possible way of getting your hands on these ever again also part of the ninja gaiden event was the black falcon avatar frame and the killer kunoichi sorry if i pronounced that wrong uh but these two different uh, avatar frames came from the assembling scrolls event and in the same vein as that we also have the dance of friendship event this was also for Diao Chan and Lu Bu. So these avatar frames are also forever locked in time. You will never be able to get your hands on these avatar frames unless again there's a new partnership and new licensing agreement between Lilith and either Dynasty Warriors or Ninja Gaiden. This is all locked forever. There's also the Halloween event, which this is weird because in 2018, part of the Halloween event was I mean, you could get your hands on these like kind of goofy looking pumpkin avatars which were unique to that event exclusively and they just as far as I know I don't think they've ever made a return which is really interesting I don't need I forgot that I even got my hands on one and I don't remember how you even get these I'm pretty sure that some of them might have come with a bundle but it doesn't say that here uh and others you might have been able to get by like exchanging some sort of like limited type of item that dropped during those events I don't remember to be honest with you I was extremely casual and free to play back then I literally started playing the game in October of 2018 so like I I'm surprised that I even got my hands on one of these but if you do ever see a player in the game um with one of these kind of avatars then you know that they have been playing the game forever like an insane amount of time like these are some of the oldest players in the game if you see these and it almost makes me want to use it right because these are so rare now that it's kind of a flex right like I've been playing since the start of the game and I think that's also probably why Lilith hasn't to my knowledge I don't think they've ever re-released these and this is the one that I wish I had right this is the coolest one I like this one a lot with the spikes there but yeah I just think it's cool that Lilith has never re-released these because it kind of makes them unique to your account although these don't seem like they're part of any licensing agreement these just seem like fo game files that they could just put into another event if they wanted to but I also think that these aren't very popular like a a avatar is not like people just use the custom one right like it's just better to use custom why wouldn't you so I think that's probably why they never reintroduced them because they're not that cool now there is also the uh Osiris League custom avatars here which I think is really cool but these are obviously very exclusive for those that were a, a part of Osiris League but I actually have no idea and you can let me know in the comment section below have they reused these for every Osiris League like every year you can get a chance to get these um I have no idea if so then they're still extremely rare and exclusive but they're not as rare and exclusive as some of these older ones in my mind because like these came around once and are gone forever anyway guys this was a little bit of a different type of video I just wanted to go down memory lane and cover some lost and forgotten content in rise of kingdoms if you enjoyed this type of video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the YouTube algorithm and it'll encourage me to make more content like this comment down below if you have any answers to the questions that I posed in this video and also let me know would you like to see a return of Lubu and Dao Chan would you 
like to see them buffed or get relics or something along those lines let me know do you want to see lilith do more licensed agreements with other games like can you imagine having like i don't know a, a character from genshin impact just show up in rise of kingdoms right as a limited time event right like it's venti or something like that or deluke right like that would be crazy the possibilities are endless but unfortunately there would be a lot of restrictions on those commanders and that type of content so i think that's probably why over the years Lilith has strayed away from those types of limited type time events strictly for licensing purposes, which is why I think we'll probably never get these types of events again. But let me know in the comments section below if you think that they should attempt to do something like that in the future. I think it would be really cool. While you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.